at the White House. Through Kristen's strong faith and sense of community, she was able to open up about their story 10 years after Donald's death when she became Military Spouse of the Year in 2018. I tell our story in the hope that maybe someone down the line, when they're in a really dark place, that they'll remember, it'll give them pause, because so often it's within minutes of an ideation that it happens. I mean, we don't have any time to waste. She now teaches resiliency. She's done over 120 presentations. These coins, tangible evidence of her testimony. She's learned of at least 21 lives who have been saved from hearing her son's voicemail. One gentleman walked out and he had a piece of paper in his hand. It was a suicide note. He was planning on taking his life that night, but he had two little boys at home. He felt like he was a burden to his family. It saved his life. He was meant to be there. Well, there's more suicide awareness now than ever before. With the pandemic, Kristen is heartbroken because she learned of at least five local military spouses who took their lives last year. And she says the suicide rates are only getting worse. Since moving here in 2019, snowshoeing is something that I've always wanted to try. The allure of hiking through the wilderness, snowshoes on my feet, the Rocky Mountains all around me sounds magical. Snowshoeing is great because it's available and accessible to a large number of people, a wide range of ages, skill levels, fitness levels, which is a big thing up here with our altitude. Abe Packars is the founder and owner of Colorado Adventure Guide. He sets us up with Tanner Thompson for our snowshoe tour along the Salt Lake Trail. It's one of several hiking trails that can be found within walking distance of their Silverthorne office. Our two hour tour is a nice introduction to the sport. This is that friendly middle ground. Hackar says that for vacationers, it can be a nice alternative to spending all of your time on the slopes. It's great for families. We have young kids who come all the time. We've even had groups pull uh, toddlers or uh, kind of infants in sleds. We're treated to a near picture perfect day on our visit with bright sunshine and firmly packed snow. This makes navigating the trail system a little less challenging. For fun, Thompson has us trek through some powder. That'll get you gassed much more quickly. A little fresh pow pow on snowshoes. A local paleontologist made the discovery of a lifetime over the summer. Anthony Maltese is the curator of the Dinosaur Resource Center in Woodland Park. He uncovered 55 individual fossils belonging to a Tyrannosaurus Rex during an expedition in South Dakota. T-Rex fossils are considered an extremely rare find. Only 80 specimens have been found since 1908. Maltese named the specimen Valerie after his wife and told News 5 how excited he is to be among a select few to have made such a discovery. I've been looking for a dinosaur like this for over half of my life now. And uh, I was just at the right place at the right time. You know, you have to be at the outcrop when the rain has come and when the erosion has moved away enough of the rock for you to see the fossils just coming out. And uh, it, it was just lucky. So cool. Maltese also says he found fossils from what he believes to be a new species of dinosaur. This was at a site in Montana. He says it's actually more common to find new species than finding T-Rex fossils. Yeah, Diane, a massive response here at the church today. A memorial is actually sitting right here where you can see dozens of colorful flowers showing up here at the steps of the church as people pay their respect. Now, I spoke with several members of the LGBT community today who just tell me they are stunned and heartbroken that a place they've considered safe is now the site of the nation's latest mass tragedy. I cannot express how sorrowful we are as an administration uh, to have to be coming together at a time like this. Hundreds passing the light during a dark day in Colorado Springs. We all just take a deep breath. Can we just ground ourselves? Elected leaders and members of the LGBTQ community trying to make sense after a gunman shot and killed multiple people at a place many packed inside this church here consider safe. And to see it happen, it's just, it leaves you wondering just how safe am I? Brian Sims is one of several members in the Colorado Springs Men's Chorus Out Loud. About 17 years ago, 
and was just coming out of the closet. And Club Q was the first place that I ever went to where I could be part of a gay community and where I felt comfortable and safe. He, along with Audi Weiss, came here to pay their respects inside the All Souls Unitarian Universalist Church. Definitely still some people I haven't heard from yet, and I just, I won't know. There is grief hundreds are working through with hugs and tears throughout the church. We've lost members of our staff. Club Q's founder, Matthew Haynes, spoke to the crowd. They devoted their careers and their lives, and they were there to listen to you. They were there when you were having a tough time. They were there to laugh with you as well. And as many work through their pain, what they're looking for now is a way to heal. Southern Colorado war hero now has a new home for free, all thanks to the Tunnel to Towers Foundation. Got it, baby. Right it. Yay! Yay! Today, retired Air Force Senior Master Sergeant Israel Del Toro welcomed his brand new mortgage free smart home in Peyton. Sergeant Del Toro was burned over 80% of his body when his Humvee was hit in an IED in 2005. He was told he only had a 15% chance to live. Well, his motto stay strong, finish strong. Obviously, you can see my injuries that, you know, I'm limited on what I, how I can earn a living. Uh, and just not having that burden of, oh my God, how am I gonna pay the, the mortgage this year, uh, means a lot. By the way, his family, one of a thousand hero families the Tunnel to Towers Foundation hopes to give homes to this year. Well, it's day three of the Shield 616 border to border ride. It has been an amazing, unique day. Started out in Grand Lake and then climbed up over to the top of Trail Ridge Road over the Continental Divide. The views were amazing. A lot of us saw elk, deer, moose. What an amazing bike ride up to the top of that road. Yeah, I've never been to Rocky Mountain National Forest. It's gorgeous. Cool. So I know I was pedaling, but I was like still looking around, looking for the scenery, looking for the moose, and I saw moose elk, so it's great. I cried. I was up there, and I was looking out across the mountain on the road, and I just saw the cloud coverage um, overlapping with the mountains, and I just couldn't help but like burst into tears. Now it was very windy at the top of Trail Ridge, and it was a little cold up there, up at the top. As we started down, Usually when you're cycling, it gets warmer as you come down further. But as we drop down into the clouds that we were seeing from up on top of Trail Ridge Road, well, it started getting colder. So when we got down in here to Estes Park, we had a lot of cold folks. We're getting ready to roll to Johnstown. And uh, it's just going to be warm all around tonight as we're donating, again, those kits to eight agencies tonight at Shields. And we'll tell you all about that vest presentation coming up tonight on News 5 at 10. In Estes Park for News 5, I'm Ira Cross. It's our family's favorite Christmas time tradition and photojournalist Kevin Reynolds actually followed us along this year to capture the essence of Forest Bend. The whole idea started with the desire to have a Christmas event. And so when we started off, we had no idea what to expect, but we just thought, let's do something cool where we can bring families together and bless our community. Say cheese! Cheese! One, two, three! Was that fun? We have lots of activities for kids to do and all ages of the family. This is so much fun. We have a hayride and we have lots of fire pits for families to do s'mores. What do you like about it? The lights. The lights? Do you like to look at everything that's here? Yeah. We have a nativity play that we do a few each night. We have animals, goats, and alpacas. Can you say hi, alpaca? I see some alpacas. And llamas and goats. And new this year is a maze, so you can wander through and get lost. Okay, we're at a dead end. We made it! It's a little dizzy and dusty in there. And uh, a zip line as well. Oh. I see a tree, I see another tree, and I see another tree. There's a lot of trees here. My hope is that families make memories and they have something that they want to come back to next year.